Hello, everybody. My name is Malin Desai. I am a cardiologist at the Cleveland Clinic, and I'm the director of Hypertrophic Cardiomyopathy Center at the Cleveland Clinic. I am also the principal investigator of the Valor HCM trial. So uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is, has been known to exist for about a little over 60 years, and we have now recognized that it has a prevalence of about uh, 1 to 200 and to 1 to 500 patients, which estimates about 15 to 20 million people. Two-thirds of them typically are thought to have obstructive HCM, and symptoms often in obstructive HCM patients are due to what is called dynamic outflow tract obstruction. Current medical therapies are typically, they were not designed specifically for, uh, manage, for this purpose. They, we just serendipitously got to using them in this context. So over the years, septal reduction therapy techniques have evolved, including surgical myectomy, as well as interventionally alcohol septal ablation. These are highly effective techniques that help reduce gradient that uh, improve symptoms as well as improve quality of life. But in order to achieve optimal results, you need to be at a highly experienced center. Not enough of them exist. Uh, so there is clearly a, an unmet need to expand the offering of available therapies uh, to the patients uh, with sim highly symptomatic obstructive HCM. So that is that unmet need is potentially fulfilled by this drug, Mavacampton, which is a targeted cardiac myosin inhibitor. So it is a drug specifically developed for HCM. It acts on the sarcomere. It reduces the hypercontractility, helping uh, in previous studies, it has been shown to reduce LV alpha tract gradient as well as symptoms. So the, that led us to the Valor study, where the question we asked was, can this drug, which we know helps improve symptoms, can it reduce the patient's need for these invasive septal reduction therapeutic procedures? Can it reduce? Can it delay? Can it defer? Can it avoid? Uh, so all things considered. So that is the genesis of the Valor HCM study. So the study design, this was a double-blind placebo-controlled randomized control trial over 19 centers in USA. Uh, 112 patients were recruited, 56 for Mavacampton and 56 for placebo. Starting dose was five milligrams for Mavacampton and one month pro follow-up with up titration or down titration of dose uh, at eight and 12 weeks. Uh, all these patients were severely symptomatic being referred for septal reduction therapy. So they were, they have a lot of, they have obstructive HCM. They were highly symptomatic. They were maxed out on available treatment. So there was, their next road was, it's time for a procedure. So those were the kind of sick patients that we recruited for this study. An important thing, so as part of the, uh, follow-up strategy, dose titration strategy. We chose clinically meaningful endpoint of echo-driven EF and gradient assessment uh, because we wanted to make sure that this is practically applicable in the real world. So the main findings here, uh, as I told you, at the beginning, 100% of patients met criteria for septal reduction therapy. So the, the goal was at week 16, we wanted to test how many patients still continue to meet the uh, uh, SRT guideline, by cri uh, SRT criteria by guideline, or how many people no longer meet the criteria and fall out of, of needing a septal reduction procedure. So what we found was, so that was the primary endpoint, and the secondary endpoints were what happens to the gradients, what happens to the NYHA class, what happens to the biomarkers, what happens to their cardiomyopathy questionnaire score. So what we found was after 16 weeks in the Mavacampton group, only 18% remained guideline eligible or chose to undergo SRT. So from 100%, it dropped down to 80, 18%.
82% no longer remain eligible versus placebo, 77% still remain eligible. So that was an absolute difference of 58 and a very high uh, p-value of 0 0.0001. In addition to that, there, all the secondary endpoints we talked about were trended in favor of Mavacampton and the difference was statistically and highly significant. As I alluded to earlier in my presentation, we are increasingly recognizing these patients. So there's, there's an increasing number of patients out there. We do not have targeted therapies for these patients. These are broad therapies with broad set of side effects. So what we needed to do was a precision type therapy that works in, on, the, on the specific heart muscle. Now, the reason why there is this need is if they do not call, if they do not get better with the standard therapy, then their only option is heart surgery or an interventional cardiologic procedure. It's great when it works. It's great at a fantastic center of excellence, but there's not enough of those. There's a lot more patients uh, and not enough centers. So there's that, there's that gap we need to fill. So there. So how could how do I think it will translate in clinical practice? You you can think about a patient, a group of patients in whom they no longer meet criteria for any invasive procedure. There will be a group of patients where they choose to defer surgery or procedure for an extended period of time for whatever reason. This can get them through that. There could be a group of people that are high risk for a procedure or do not have the anatomy suitable for a procedure. They need some alternative uh, therapy. So I see it playing out in multiple different arenas. More than likely, the way I envision it, people will start off with is you try standard therapy, doesn't work, add this, works, then great. It doesn't work or it works for a little bit, then continue. If it doesn't work, then you, so it could be an alternative or a stopgap to SRT. So the next step for specifically for this, as a, this 16 week study was placebo control. So now all patients were offered a chance to go for surgery. 95% patients chose not to go for surgery or alcohol ablation. 95% patients are continuing on medications. So the obvious next step is, is there a right dose? or is it a different dose for different people? What is the optimal way of monitoring this uh, medication? How many, what, how many people really say, I don't wanna deal with this, let, just let me send, send me for surgery. What is the turn around, I mean, what is the turnover rate? What is the, what is the um, transition from medical therapy to surgical therapy uh, rate? All these questions and plus, importantly, safety, long-term safety. So, so these are the things, so these all will be tested, we will be testing in the long run. And plus, there are some mechanistic questions, you know, which patients may drop EF or which patients improve better? Are, are there some biomarkers? Are there some imaging markers that, that we can look into? So there's plenty of questions that could be asked. In severely symptomatic obstructive HCM patients who were referred for septal reduction therapy, uh, Mavacampton uh, titrated using simple echocardiographic measurements significantly reduced the eligibility criteria, eligibility for SRT uh, compared to placebo. In addition to that, it significantly improved NYHA class by at least one. It improved LVOT gradient, biomarkers, as well as Kansas City cardiomyopathy uh, score. Additionally, it was safe with no new additional signals, and it, in spite of being used as combination therapy or on top of combination therapy, as well as with disopyramide. 